We're going to talk about Twitter bots. I guess I'm going to talk about Twitter bots. I'm going to make a Twitter bot. Today, this is a video I'm making about how to make a Twitter bot. This is for my Digital Studies 301 Creative Coding class at UMW, and I made some videos for their third project for this class, and I think it helped. So I'm going to go back and actually do videos for the first and second project as well. The first project was to make a Twitter bot. I'm going to show you how to make a Twitter bot right now. Uh, these are Twitter bots. This is my Twitter account, and uh, I have a list of bots I've made as a list I call bot spawn. So if you go to twitter.com slash Zach Whalen slash list slash bot spawn, you'll see this list of bots that I've made. I've made many bots. Uh, these are just some of them, 22 at the moment. Some of these are inactive at this point for various reasons, um, but you know a lot of them I think I'm, pre I'm pretty happy with. Uh, I'm going to be talking about a certain kind of bot today that I've made with a tool called Cheap Bots Done Quick. There are many kinds of ways you can make a Twitter bot. Some of these are made with Python libraries, some with Perl, uh, some are made with another tool that I made. Uh, this tool called SSBot is something I made that uses Google Spreadsheets to construct your bot. I'm not going to be showing you how to use this today. In fact, uh, I'm really, this is really depreciated as a tool because of something I can show you. Um, the main thing with, cheap, with SSBot, if you want to use SSBot, is uh, you have to bring your own credentials down here where you have to fill in your consumer key and your, uh, what is it, yeah, the consumer secret. These are things that you get from your Twitter app, which is a, an account that you, a special kind of account you set up with Twitter uh, with today, so that you can use Twitter's API. Uh, Twitter has stopped giving out those app accounts, so um, this probably won't work uh, anymore. Uh, of course, you can, if you already have an app, you can use it here. If you've already made a bot with this tool, you can reuse the same app credentials in here. Um, you know, you'd have to do it, your workflow would be slightly different, but it would still work for that. So that, you know, it's still kind of viable, but at this point, I'm not really working on this tool that much anymore just because Twitter's made it a lot harder to use this kind of thing. Uh, Cheap Bots Done Quick, on the other hand, is nice because it's going to use its own app credentials, and um, it, every account that makes a bot with Cheap Bots Done Quick uses the same app, so it's easy for somebody to make a Twitter account and then make a bot uh, quickly, as the, the name suggests. So I'm going to try to do this right now. I'm going to try to make a bot um, using Cheap Bots Done Quick, which was my student's assignment, in which uh, I can do, uh, hopefully, right now. So to start, you just need to, to make an account with Twitter, and I, so uh, I'm going to try this out. Um, there are various ways in which Twitter might change things as part of the sign-up process to make it easier or harder to make these kind of um, uh, parody accounts like this. So uh, we'll see. They may throw up some barriers as I, as I try to do this, and, and I'll try to work through them if I can. Um, so I, I'm thinking that because you know, it's October 4th as I'm, feeling, uh, as I'm filming this, uh, this is the time of year when people have strong feelings about pumpkin spice as a, a flavoring paradigm, and so I thought it would be interesting to make a bot that explores that. I know there are other bots that play with pumpkin spice. This is really just to demonstrate the idea, so this isn't really an original idea necessarily, but it's a uh, thematic, topical, seasonal idea. So uh, I'm going to do this using a technique um, called infinite Gmail. I, I don't know if other people call it this, but this is what I call it. The idea is that when you give it your Gmail address, so Zach.Waylon, if I can hold my hand correctly, here we go, is my actual Gmail address. If you add the plus sign and then something else after it, before the at, that still goes to the same inbox. You still get that in your Gmail address, like in your Gmail inbox. And so you can, crucially for this case, you can click the link to confirm your account once you've created it. Um, but as far as I can tell, Twitter still thinks of this as a separate account. So they will not recognize this as zach.wayland at Gmail, which is the, the email I use to sign up that I have associated with my actual uh, Twitter account. So let's see if this works. Um, doesn't always. So, okay, so creating this account, yep. I'm calling it Pumpkin Spice Land, I guess. We can always change these things later. Um, what am I interested in? Nothing. Um, I don't want to follow anyone. Nope. Huh, okay, interesting. So I missed it. I didn't see if there was an option, but sometimes as you're signing up for an account, so it worked, by the way, but um, when you're signing up for an account, they usually, there's a part where they ask you about uh, finding people to follow by looking in your contacts from Gmail, and I see that that's an option over here, so maybe they just take that out of the default process when you sign up. It used to be you had to uncheck a box as you were signing up to prevent it from doing that, and what it would do is 
And what it will do, I assume if I click on this book, uh, on this, is go into my contacts in Gmail and then find anyone else in my contacts that has a Twitter account and then send them an email saying, hey, Zach Whalen just signed up for Twitter, you should follow him. Um, which can be kind of annoying to, for those people, but it also kind of gives away your bot before you're necessarily ready to share it with anyone. So, you know, I, that may not be um, worth doing. Okay, so I need, to, so as you see here at the top, I need to confirm my Twitter account. I'm gonna turn my screen off for a second so I can switch to my email address, to my email inbox, so you won't see that because I have, you know, it's my email. Um, and then I'll, I'll bring it back uh, shortly. Hopefully this will just flip on and off. Yep. Yep. All right, so it did not actually send the email confirmation yet, so try again. There it goes. Oh, there it is now. Okay. Okay, and we're back. So uh, I didn't even notice this, but the, the handle that came up with is actually pretty great. Um, Land pumpkin. So if you go to twitter.com slash land pumpkin right now, you'll see the bot in whatever form it is by the time I finish this. Uh, but here it is right now. It's a, it's a fresh um, Twitter account that I control and that I can do different things with. Um, now, Twitter it has been cracking down on fake accounts. So you know, this, they may crack down on this one. Um, I don't know. I'll try to make it so that they don't. But you know, it, it, just, it may not last forever, and that's fine. Um, so a couple of things you can do to make it seem more realistic, I think is, of course, you can start tweeting with it. Um, I like to change the profile stuff pretty early in the process so that it has a sense of personality as I'm starting to, starting to build the bot. So I thought it'd be useful to go to, um, to get, you know, just some nice pictures of pumpkins. Um, I'm going to unsplash so I can get some free uh, public domain images of pumpkins. Let's see. I like this one. Yeah, this one looks kind of generic and kind of creepy. Kind of like, you know, the, this is pumpkin land, so these are the pumpkins, they're coming for you in pumpkin land. I don't know, or they're, or they're welcoming you to pumpkin land, I guess. Uh, okay, so where was my thing here? I guess these are from Vermont, great. So I'm gonna download this image, and where did I put that, I wonder? And then I'll stick it here. I'm using Opera for this to bypass my uh, password. My password manager. Okay, so there's the. Oh, that's pretty good. Okay, so I got the header, header change. Let me get a good profile picture. Just a single pumpkin. That's not a pumpkin, that's a flower. Those are pumpkins. Eh. <laughs> Little kid. I just want a single pumpkin by itself. I don't want anything else with it. I don't want jack-o'-lanterns either. Oh, yeah, this is pretty good. I can probably edit this out. So, okay, so I'll download this one. Patrick Four made this one, and I'll add this as my profile picture, and then I'll crop it just to be around the um, pumpkin. So. Pretty good. Okay, I'll add the other things later, but you know, I've got some pumpkins here. It's starting to feel, uh, feel, like, feel like autumn on my, my Twitter account page here. So let's get into some cheap bots done quick stuff. So this is a website that uses a tool called Tracery, which is, this is the, the tutorial for working with Tracery. Tracery. The idea with Tracery is that it uses a data format called JSON to structure replacement grammars, and you can see how they look here. So in this case, um, this is this has this always has uh, named lists that are replaced inside of other lists, basically to make it a recursive kind of structure. And with this little tutorial, you can see that in, pra in practice. So right now, this is going to be creating something called an animal, and it's got all these options to fill in every time it runs to replace the word animal with one of these things, or really the symbol animal with one of these things. And so if you re-roll it, you'll see the output over here on the right is where it's showing you what it looks like as it's rolled one of these. So every, roll, every row here is a different roll of, of, its, uh, of tracery. 
And if you run it, you'll see you know, multiple outputs. The, the point of this is to show you that you can do different, do, do different outputs. Uh, this is editable here, so I can edit this in place. And if I gave it, instead of animal, uh, if I called it you know, pumpkin, you can see it updating in real time. But or not squash. So with only two options, it's going to choose one or the two options each time. And, and, and in this case, it, it looked like it chose mostly butternut squash for whatever reason. It's random, so it's not really trying to choose one or the other. It just happens that way. So the more options you give it, the more variety you're going to get. Um, watermelon. We'll, we'll st stick with the squash theme. So yeah, so that you can get all these different options as you roll through it. Um, it, so usually you're not just going to be replacing one symbol, you'll, you'll be replacing several symbols in a sentence. So this is kind of the common uh, use right here. So you've got the sentence and this is being, this, uh, this symbol sentence is, is being populated by these constructors that contain several symbols. Let me make this bigger. So uh, when, you, when it processes this, when it rolls this, it sees this symbol color and that symbol color has those hash marks on either side of it. So it's going to, instead of printing the word color, it's going to go down to this color symbol list and then choose one item from that list. And then it's going to, to build it from there. So you can see with a, uh, only one sentence, so there's only one option here in the sentence list, it's going to be cr uh, creating quite a lot of variety. And this is kind of similar to what I'm going to be doing. I, I think my idea isn't very complicated, so I'm not going to be needing to do this very, very much. You know, not, not, I'm not going to need to get very fancy. Uh, but, uh, you, you know, there are some modifiers, there are some ways you can have it remember choices within it. So let me show you some of the bots I've made already with Cheatbots done quick. And for all of these, I've shared the, uh, the source code with them. So if you go to Monster Sounds, this is, uh, it's RR and then five A's and then RRL. Uh, the idea with this is that it makes, it generates the kinds of sounds that monsters make in old comic books. Um, it's, you know, it's a dumb idea, but it, you know, it kind of demonstrates how Cheatbots on Quick works. So if you click on that link under there where the, for the website here uh, for this bot, it'll take you to the Cheatbots on Done Quick source code. So this is actually all of the source code. Um, my, I'm kind of in a weird alignment here today, but uh, I'll see if I can make that bigger. And no, I don't like where that ended up. So I'm going to just pop that out of full screen and then move over a tad. So here we go. So this is the tweet that's going to be constructed down here. And it's a constructor that takes a symbol called one, a symbol called two, a symbol called three, one called four, and then one called punct. So for the first one, it picks a one option from this list. You know, for two, it picks one from that list. It's hopefully pretty clear how that works and that's structured. So it, it ends up making things like, like this. Uh, with Cheatbots done quick, what you can do is you can preview it as you're working on it. And even in, oh, lost my tabs. I'm not used to, not used to working with uh, Opera so much. So, yeah, so you can re-roll it and kind of see how it, what kinds of things it's producing as it's in place right here. Even though I'm not logged in to edit this bot, I'm just viewing it. Um, it's still, you know, I can see the source code. So DJ3000 is another one. Uh, this is a bot based on a joke from The Simpsons. I think I've got the sound hooked up so I can, I can, is the DJ 3000. you can hear it, but we'll if see. CDs if not, I'll edit it in And post. it has three distinct varieties of a named. In this episode, Bart has won an elephant from a radio station. And so the DJs that were responsible for that contest are supposed to, you know, are in danger of losing their jobs to a machine. And Shattered. so this woman, this woman is demonstrating the machine, which is called the DJ 3000. So I made a Twitter bot called the DJ 3000. Hey, hey, how about that weather out there? Whoa. That was the caller from hell. Well, hot dog, we have a wiener. Man, that thing's great. Don't praise the machine. If you don't get that kid an elephant by tomorrow, the DJ 3000 gets your job. <laughs> Looks like those clowns in Congress did it again. What a bunch of clowns. <laughs> How does he keep up with the news like that? Exactly. How does he keep up with the news like this that? Is the so DJ uh, I thought. You know, that template is pretty simple, and so I made a bot called DJ3000 that, in fact, uh, does this. Oops, my account has been locked. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> okay, looks like my account has been locked already, even though I haven't done anything yet. Um, I may have broken the rules of Twitter. Okay, well, let me just show you uh, if it'll even let me back to my accounts. Uh, it won't even let me back into Twitter at all. Huh. Wow. 